going to do the bullion stitch. Uh, for the bullion, you want to have your fabric out of the hoop. You want to be able to manipulate the fabric and move it around easily, and it's going to have to fold at times. So being in the hoop is just kind of impossible. And you need a milliner's needle, a straw needle. Um, this, I think, is a number three, and it is... Uh, why you need a milliner's needle is you need that needle to be the same diameter at the eye that it is down near the tip so that you get a nice even tube of wraps. Um, if you use an embroidery needle, an embroidery needle's eye is bigger, um, is the biggest part of the needle, and then it's conical. It gets smaller as it goes down the shaft, so you would end up with an uneven uh, tube and it would not look right. Um, all you have to do is this stitch is built on a back stitch. So I'm going to be moving from uh, left to right. I'm going to back up, make my back stitch, and then I'm going to come out the same place that my floss is coming out of the fabric. Then I'm going to turn my fabric. I want my needle to be pointed away from me. And then I'm going to take my floss that's coming out of the fabric and just wrap it around my needle. You can actually wrap this in either direction. I like to wrap in this direction. It's the most comfortable for me. I think probably because I'm right-handed. It's very important that you don't tug on this floss. You want it to be gently on the needle and even but not tight. I'm going to assume I have about 15 on there. And 15 is just what I'm going to do right now, not necessarily. It's always different wraps. Next thing you want to do is, oh, I forgot to tell you, but I have a finger back behind the eye of the needle, holding the needle in place with my thumb, and I have another one back here behind the shaft in the needle. And this is really, really important because what that finger back there has done is it's held those wraps on the needle. If that was just standing up in the air without holding on to it, it would unwrap a little bit and they would get all wonky and it would ruin the stitch. So this way, that finger being back there holds those in place. Now that they're wrapped, I'm gonna pinch those between the fatty parts of my thumb and forefinger, and they're completely encased. You don't want any, uh, any of them sticking out. And then I'm just going to gently pull my thread through, and you'll see it fold the fabric. See how it fold the fab folded the fabric when I pulled on it? There's my little bullion. I'll tighten it up, and I'm gonna go right back down in the hole right there and I'm going to come up to the left because this is a back stitch. So there's my first one, cute little back stitch, I mean, bullion, and then I'm going to come, this is where it's coming out, I'm going to back up to that same hole where this guy is and I'm going to come out in that same hole turn my fabric with a needle pointed away from me and wrap. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. You can see that my finger is sitting there back behind there. I'm going to pinch that and pull it through. The stitch is actually really easy and it moves very quickly. The size of these, how loopy they are, is determined by the size of your needle, uh, the, the thickness of your thread, and the number of wraps that you're putting on here. 
and how long your back stitch is that it's built on. If I had these 15 wraps, but I had a very, very short back stitch, these would be loopier. If I had this same size back stitch and many more wraps, it would make a very, a very loopy petal. If I had this same back stitch and very few wraps, only maybe enough wraps just to cover the distance between the dots, I'd have a flat bullion. And you end up sooner or later using all different things like that. That's the bullion stitch.